Samuel Belkin came to America from Eastern Europe as a young man with just a few pennies in his pocket. A recognized prodigy in the famed Jewish study halls of white Russia, he left to America after his father was unceremoniously shot in the family's Polish home. Uh, there was a knock on the door one night and he, his father opened the door to find a uniformed policeman who said to him, you are a communist, and he shot him dead. And then another, an older brother, was taken away and never seen again. A lot of loss. At the age of 18, he came to America. My first cousin sponsored him. Ida Sobel sponsored him. I remember her, too. She sponsored him. He came over knowing not one word of English and with 18 cents in his pocket. And within six years, he knew English and he was studying for, it, for his doctorate. He attended Brown as well as Harvard universities with postgraduate honorary standing, despite the fact that he had no formal secondary education. After earning his doctorate, Belkin became a professor back at his first school, Yeshiva College. By 1943, at the tender age of 32, he was elected to be president. No matter how sophisticated he became, and no matter how sophisticated his lifestyle became, at his core, he remained a humble Yeshiva Bacher. During Dr. Belkin's tenure as the president of Yeshiva University, he guided the school through the greatest expansion in its history. The immense growth that followed began with the college achieving university status and the establishment of numerous graduate schools. The determination he had to fulfill this dream and the exemplary way with which he conducted his personal affairs endeared others to support him in the journey towards this tremendous achievement. So this is a man who was a builder, he was a visionary, again he was a great Torah scholar, but his greatness was in his leadership in transforming a school which was just a school and a yeshiva to being a multifaceted university. That's my sense of Dr. Samuel Pelkin. In many ways his greatest achievement was the establishment of Stern College for Women, that it's the first institute of higher education that believed that there were no limits on how women could learn. Stern College for Women opened its doors in 1945, providing unfettered access for women to pursue degrees in the sciences and humanities. This period also saw the planning of Wurzweiler's School of Social Work at the Furkoff School of Psychology, the inauguration of the Cardozo Law School, and the opening of the acclaimed Albert Einstein School of Medicine. To this end, it was Belkin who met and persuaded Einstein to lend his name to the institution. I am great hope that Yeshiva University has honored me by using my name in connection with the new College of Medicine. Dr. Belkin would ensure that the school would have a truly heterogeneous student body, urgently supplying diverse Americans with access to high-level education. The greatness of America lies not in us being a homogeneous people, but a heterogeneous people. And therefore, Einstein wants the best and brightest students, regardless of background, race, creed, and national origin. I think his legacy was making sure that this both be Torah without excuses and higher education without excuses. I think his legacy is frankly a modern Orthodox community um, filled with Yeshiva University graduates and rabbis and social workers and lawyers and doctors. Um, and it's hard to imagine that there would have been such a proliferation of communities without him. In Belkin's original application letter to what was then known as Yeshiva College, he described his desire to merge two worlds, to excel in secular studies while keeping the Torah lineage alive. In this way, he embodied the traits of his own future Yeshiva University applicants. Yeshiva University owes so much to Dr. Samuel Belkin, a man who came to this country with nothing but his mind, a set of ideals, and a vision. 
he asked me a question. He said, Linda, do you know the difference between a dreamer and a man of vision? A dreamer dreams a dream, a man of vision dreams a dream and makes it come true. I think the great challenge that he left us is to say, don't let it atrophy, don't let it just be a thing of the past. Let's not sing the Yiddish song, Vas is given, is given, is nishtu. What was, was, and it isn't anymore. But I think his charge to me and to my successors and to all the Rabbeim and faculty and students is to say, I've taken you to this place, build it. I often pray to God that I may live to see the Yeshiva University financially more secure, academically more excellent, and total learning in greater depth. I would like to see a Yeshiva city here, a city.